In the last couple of videos, we've seen the power of ViewSets in Django REST framework. They allow you to very easily consolidate a set of operations, and typically these are CRUD operations around a model or a query set in your Django application. In this video, we're going to change the results that are seen by our users when they visit the orders and order ID endpoints. Now, if we go to the code at the moment, all of the routes in this order view set are protected by one permission class, and that's the is authenticated class. And that means that for every route that's created as part of this view set, the user has to be authenticated in order to send the request to that endpoint and get back the correct response. And you can see here that when we send a get request to the order list endpoint, without authentication credentials, that's not going to be accepted. But if I go to the Django admin and log into the admin, that's going to create that session in Django. And then when we refresh the page, it's going to give us back all of the orders. Now, at the moment, the user, when they send a request to slash orders, are going to get back all of the orders in the database when they are authenticated. But that might be a problem. Let's say you're a user and you want to view your own orders. You send a request to this endpoint and you get back all of the other users in the database and their orders as well. That's potentially not what you want. Probably it's not what you want. So we're going to fix that in this video. And by doing so, we're going to get rid of this action here. So we have a user orders endpoint as well that gives back the user's specific orders. We're going to rewrite this code here. And what I want to achieve in this code are we want the following permission rules to apply. Firstly, users can only view their own orders, but administrators can view all of the orders in the database. And secondly, we want users to only be able to update and delete their own orders, whereas admin, of course, can do that with all orders in the database. So that's going to enhance the order view set with a little bit of extra protection. Users can only view, update and delete their own orders in the database. Now, what we're going to do in order to achieve this is we're going to change the base query set of the order view set class that we have here. So underneath the properties in the view set, let's define the get underscore query set method. And what we're going to do is get the base query set by calling super dot get query set. And then we can do an if statement here to check some condition. Now, what we're going to check here is that self dot request dot user. And remember, that's the authenticated user. We're going to check if the is staff property in the user object in Django is set to true. And if that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to call query set dot filter. And we're going to filter the query set to only the orders that belong to self.request.user. And then finally, in the method, we can return the query set. So let's explain this quickly. We're getting the base query set, which refers to the query set property on this class. And that's basically fetching all of the orders from the database and prefetching some related items. And then once we have that query set, we're going to check if the user is a normal user, if they're not a staff member. In other words, if they're not an admin user. And if they're a normal user, we're going to call query set dot filter and get back only the user's orders as the query set for this view set. And then finally, we return the query set. And if it's an admin user, then it's just going to default to this on line 58. So what effect is this going to have? Let's go back to the browsable API. When we refresh the page, we're going to get back the same result. And that's because we're logged in as an admin user. And that's the user with the ID of one. That user, as you can see here, has access to the Django admin. So let's go to the users here and we have a second user in the database called John Doe. And if we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see there's a field here for the staff status and it's unticked, which means that the user is not a staff member. And that means that if we go back to the get query set function, the is staff property will evaluate to false. And then that is going to double negate. So basically this if statement is going to run and it's going to filter down the query set to only the orders that belong to the user. So let's test this out. And to do that, I'm going to go to api.http. This was the file we created earlier in the series to work with the VS Code REST client extension. So we can define requests here and then send requests to our Django server. We're going to create a request here and it's going to be a get request to the orders endpoint. Now let's go to the bottom here and do that. So I'm going to paste in that request and we can change slash products to slash orders and then send that to Django. Now, if we look at the response here, authentication credentials were not provided. And as we know, the slash orders endpoint is now protected by authentication. So we can't send that request. We need to be authenticated. We created this endpoint earlier in the series to get a valid access token from Django. So let's send that again and we'll get back an access token here. And that's under the access key. So let's just copy that. And what I'm going to do is go down here and we're going to add the authorization header. And we're going to set that to a bearer token and paste that in. Now, if we try this again and send the request, we get back this order here or this list of orders. And you can see the user ID is set to one. So this token here that we're sending is associated with the admin user. 
But if we change that to John Doe, we're going to get back a second token. So let's copy this access token here and go back to the authorization token that we have here. And we can paste this token in and we're going to send that request. And this time we get back the orders associated with user 2. If we scroll down, you can see there are two orders here for this user. And the second one doesn't have any line items. But basically what we've done here is we've performed some filtering of the base query set using this get query set function here. If the user is not an administrator, it's going to filter down the orders in the database to only return those that are associated with the authenticated user. So that's probably what you want. If you want to return your orders to a client, you don't want to be returning all of the orders from other clients. You want to filter that down and only give back the client their orders. But for administrators, that could be different. And that's the purpose of this if statement here. Now, what we can also do because of this method is make sure that normal users cannot see the orders for other users. So let's do that just now. Let's go back to api.http and I'm going to copy this in here and we'll paste that below. And what I'm going to add in here to the URL is one of the order IDs. Now, to get the order ID, I'm going to go back to the browsable API. And this order ID here is associated with an order placed by user one. What we're going to do is add that to the URL here and that's going to form a detail URL for one of the orders. If we send this request, you can see we get back the response here that tells us that no order matches the given query and we get back a 404 not found at the top as well. If we go to views.py, the reason that it's not finding this order is because in the get query set method, we have filtered this order out using this line of code here. So another client or another user cannot view the orders that are created by other users in the application. Now the restrictions that are placed by this method they're going to apply to all of the different URLs and views in this view set. So only administrators can also update and delete orders that are placed by other users, but normal users can only interact with their own orders in this application because of this function. And as I said at the start of the video, we can now remove the custom action that we added. This is now redundant because we can get the user orders by default when we send a request to the slash orders endpoint, because the orders that are going to be returned are now filtered for normal users based on this method. So let's close this here. And I just want to emphasize at the end of this video, how much functionality we've got just by adding this order view set. We have a full set of URLs for all CRUD operations on the order model that we have in this Django application. And we know how to serialize data from the database to JSON data and how to deserialize incoming request bodies from JSON data to the order objects. All of that is provided by the order serializer that we just have to add to this query set as a field. And that's the serializer class field. We also have the normal permission classes, the pagination class, and the filter set class and backends as well. We saw all of that earlier in the series with the generic views in REST framework, but these all apply to view sets and model view sets as well. And as before, we can also override some of the methods that are part of these view sets and generic view classes. And that allows us to customize the functionality, customize the results that are shown to users and customize permissions and object access. So that's all for this video. If you want to support the channel and you find this content useful, check out this coffee page that we have. And thanks very much to everyone who's contributed and supported the channel. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying this content. In the next video, we're going to look at more complex serializers and we're going to look at how we can send post requests with related objects and how we can create not only the main object tied to the serializer, but also any related objects that are part of the request. And we're going to show how we can override the serializer create method in order to do that. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.